Let me get the chop in this fable. We in the building. DB4. Die before me gaming. Salute to the subscribers, man. Hey yo, let me know if you vibing or if you subscribing. Shout me a holler in the comment section. DBMG, what up? All my RTS people, what up? All my RPG people, what up? Oh, we gonna get it together. Let's turn up. Yeah, you already figured the streets out. Yeah, right. It's all about smiles and cries. Get the drink down, man. What the fuck is that? Hey, hold on, Lars. Oh, hold on, hold on. Smiles and cries. Smiles and cries. Smiles and cries, I hear you. Yeah, you gotta, you gotta control your smiles and cries. Because that's all you have. And nobody can take that away from you. Mountain Blade 2, Banner Lord, we are here for a glorious episode. Let's get it. Oh man, I've been waiting to do this one. I've been waiting for this one. Quick history lesson. When I first started my channel, one of the very first games we played was a real-time strategy, kingdom management, wartime simulator. And that's exactly what this type of game is. This is one of the best kingdom management wartime simulators we got. Now, if you're not familiar with the Mountain Blade series, the original Mountain Blade came out in 2008, and then that game was followed by two other games, dope expansions that were standalone expansions, and then the modding community for the very first Mountain Blade was out of this world. A lot of great mods came from that game. And then now we're here with Mountain Blade 2. Bannerlord. They basically took all the best things from them first few games and expansions and DLCs and expanded on it and made an amazing game. Now the first game of this series came out in 2008 and this game was finally released in 2022. People have been waiting on this game for years, decades. Now this game was in early access for a while. I've been following it for a minute, at least five years. And now I finally get the chance to play it and bring it to you guys. Now what we're gonna do is start up a brand new campaign in just a second. But I just wanna talk about how dope this game is. This game is basically a sandbox game. So what that means is the possibilities are endless. You can basically do whatever you want in this type of wartime simulator game. The whole world is war torn and you could do anything from being like a merchant a caravan leader you can be a regular soldier run your entire kingdom on your own they got politics in here you can raid villages you can be a bandit a bandit leader the possibilities are endless now we're going to start from the very beginning and start with the main campaign but I just wanted to get this out the way. This is probably one of my favorite games of all time to watch content on when it comes to these type of real-time strategy, wartime simulator games. Now, this game was developed by Tell Worlds Entertainment. And yeah, they did an amazing job. So salute to them. Now, without further ado, let's get down to some gameplay. For 500 years, the Calradian Empire dominated the continent. Its armies scattered foes before them. The strongholds of proud tribes crumbled beneath its engines of war. From the forests of the north, to the wastes of the south. All was brought beneath the standard of their legions. Brutal as the conquest was, the wise agreed that it brought peace. The land, now untroubled by armies, grew rich. But empires, like men, grow old. Leaders lose a common cause. Corruption spreads. Old enemies learn the Empire's tricks and devise new ones of their own. Until one day, the bonds holding the Empire snap. Then comes the Civil War. Fitting all against all. 
a time of hatred. A time of suffering. But also, even in the worst hours, a time of courage and defiance. As new leaders arise, from new places and new peoples, to turn back the tides of destruction and bring forth a new world from the ashes of the old. And there we have it, the intro. Now that in itself was amazing. Now, this is the startup of the character creation. When you first start up your character, you have to pitch, pick a culture, like where you want to be from. Now, I'm going to give a quick explanation of these different cultures. The Empire is what the story we just seen was about. The Empire itself was one whole nation, and it kept all of these other nations at bay, and that kept peace in this land of Colorado. But what we have now is the empire itself has been fractured into several different factions. And it allowed all of these other minor factions or other clans to now rise up in power. And now there's a major civil war going on in Colorado. I'll explain that a lot more later. But what this means is each empire and each faction has a unique backstory, bonuses and disadvantages. So we can go through these real quick. We have the Sturgeon. We have the Empire itself, the Sturgeons from the north in the Winterlands. We have the Valandians, full of knights and things like that. Spears, lances, and horseback. Then we also have the Asari. These are like desert folk people. They have camels and things like that, desert raiders. Then we have the Kazoots. These are more like horse raiders, very similar to the Dothraki in Game of Thrones. Real dope. Bunch of horsemen. Then we have the Batanians. The Batanians are also like a forest folk. They specialize in things like military production and bow and arrows, range weapons and stuff like crossbows. Pretty dope. Now, we're actually going to go with... For this playthrough specifically, we're actually going to go with the Batanian faction because their bonuses allow us to get 50% less speed penalty and 15% fight sight range in forest. And plus we have town rules basket plus one military production. That's pretty dope. But we get 10% slower build rate in projects and settlements. Now, that's not too crazy for this playthrough we're going to be doing. The most important thing is the speed bonus we're going to be getting with the less penalty in forest because most of this map is filled with forest, and I'm explaining that later. That's basically their backstory. Pretty dope. Now, we're going to be coming from the Batanian culture, so let's pick that. Now, this is the character creation, character creation screen. Now, I'm going to keep this... I can get real detailed with this and make like a real specific character change a lot of these sliders and stuff. But what we're going to do, we're going to make this a little bit interesting. We're going to randomize everything until we get somebody that looks insane. We're going to keep randomizing until we get somebody that we fairly like. This dude looks insane with the fro and everything. We might go with this. I might just change up a few things with the randomization just to make him a little bit like our character, a little bit more unique. Now, this gets real in-depth. I'm satisfied with the bed in, in this head because if I would have did it myself, this is the type of character I would have created. Probably like a little fro and a little bed like that. So, we're going to go with this. Now, this is the very interesting part about the character creation. As you create your character, when you start the main campaign, you got to kind of like build your backstory. Just like you picked your culture and that determined bonuses and weaknesses as you build your backstory it's going to determine your stats your starting stats now these are the six main stats in the game you have vigor control endurance cunning social and intelligence you can basically look at it like these are your combat and movement skills these are relative to like 
other things like medic, trade, roguery, cunning, tactics, things like that. Things that don't involve combat. Now, we're going to get into this stuff and what this means later on. But for now, let's just build out our backstory. Now, real quick, the way this works is it says you was born to a family of each one of these backstories are going to change your main stats. This gives us plus three vigor and an extra point in bow. So we're going to get a point into two handed and a point into bow. And each one of these changes the starting stat, as you can see. Depending on what you pick, it's, and that's super dope within itself because you tell your own little story with the backstory here, but you also get to pick a stat that you prefer to start with. Now that's dope in itself. Alright, for this part, we're going to be saying that our character was born to a family of bards. And here we have it. Your father was a bard, drifting from Sheafton Hall to Sheafton's Hall. Making his living singing the praises of one Britannian aristocrat and mocking his enemies. Then going to his enemy's hall and doing the reverse. You learned from him that a clever tongue could spare you from a life toddling in the fields. If you kept your wits about you. And there we go. We come from a family of bars. Pretty dope. We're going to get 10 skill levels and one focus point to roguery and one to charm. One attribute point to social. So we're going to get a whole attribute point to our social skill. We're going to get something to our charming ability and one to our roguery. All right. Now, in this part of our backstory, as a child, we were noted for you can pick things like leadership skills, your brawn, your attention to detail, your aptitude for numbers, your way with people. But we're going to be going with our skill to horses. Now. You were always drawn to animals and spent much time as possible hanging out in the village stables. You could calm horses and were sometimes called upon to break in new cults. You learned the basics of the veterinary arts, much of which is applicable to humans. Now we're going to get a point, a full point in endurance. We're going to get some riding skill, a point in riding, and we're also going to get a point in medical. That's pretty good, pretty important medical knowledge. All right, for this part, we're going to be going with instead of herd the sheep, worked in a village smithy, repaired projectiles, hunted small game, or sold product in a market. We're going to be going with as a child, like all village children, you helped out in the fields, and I also gathered herbs in the wild. Now, with this, we're going to be like you were sent by the village healers up into the hills to look for useful medicinal plants. You learned which herbs healed wounds or brought down fever and how to find them. It's going to give us 10 skill points and one focus point to medicine and scouting and one attribute point to endurance. Now it's going to give us a scouting point, which is pretty dope. It's going to give us a medical point, an extra medical point that's pretty dope, and it's going to give us a whole attribute point in endurance. Now that's also pretty good. Scouting is a good skill to have early. Medicine is always good, and endurance is really good too. Dope. All right, in this part of our backstory, as a youth, as a youngster growing up in Colorado, war was never too far away. You, I trained with the, the hearth guard, stood guard with the garrison, rode with the scouts, joined the kern, or marched with the camp followers. We actually trained with the infantry, levy and armed with spear and shield, drawn from small holding farmers, have always been the backbone of most Colorado armies. We're going to get a little bit, we're going to get a full point in vigor, attribute point, and then we're going to get some skill points in one-handed and pole arms. Real important combat skills. All right, all right. In this part of our story, as a young adulthood, we actually, before we set out for life of adventure, our biggest achievement was we treated people well. And here it goes. Yours wasn't the kind of reputation that local legends are made of. But it was the kind that wins you respect amongst those around you. You were constantly fair and honest in your business dealings and helpful to those in trouble. In doing so, you got a good sense of what made people tick. For this, I'm going to begin 10 skill points, obviously, and one focus point to charm and steward. 
We also going to be getting one to mercy, generosity and honor plus five for now off the bat. Now, this is going to be giving us a uh, extra attribute point in social It's going to give us an extra point in charm. And it's also going to give us one point in steward. All right. Now, this is the final part of our backstory before we get into the game. Now, like many families in Colorado, your life was upended by war. Your home was ravaged by the passage of army after army. Eventually, you sold your property and set off with your father, mother, brother, and two younger siblings to a new town you heard was safer. But you did not make it. Along the way, the inn in which you were staying was attacked by raiders. Your parents were slain and your two youngest siblings seized. But you and your brother survived because you subdued a raider. So that's what we're going to be doing. We actually subdued a raider and made our escape. Now, choosing this backstory, you were able to grab a knife in, in the confusion of the attack. You stab a raider blocking your way and made our escape. Now, we're going to begin 10 skill levels again, one focus point to one-handed in athletics, and one attribute point to vigor. So we're going to boost up our vigor a little bit more. It's going to give us a skill point to one-handed and a skill point in athletics, which is going to be like endurance and stuff like that. Pretty dope. Pretty dope. Now, that's our backstory. That's what happened when we came to Caridia. Let's get it. All right, and this is going to be our character name. You prepare to set off with your brother on a mission of vengeance and rescue. Here is our story. We come from the Britannian culture, a family of bards. In our early childhood, we had skill with horses. In our adolescence, we gathered herbs in the wild. We learned medical skills. In our youth, we trained with the infantry. As a young adult, we learned how to treat people well. And at the very end, our family was ambushed and subdued by a party of raiders. And this is how we end up on the map. Brother, it's been three, three days now we've been tracking those bastards. I think we're getting close. We need to think about what happens when we catch them. How are we going to rescue our brother and sister? Are we up for a fight? This looks like an old training field for the legions. Perhaps we can spare some time and brush up on our skills. The practice could come in handy when we catch up with the raiders. All right, I'm going to run the course. I need to know I can fight if I have to. Let's go on. All right, here we go. We got the tutorial. Let's get it. We're actually going to play through the tutorial since it's the first time we got this game on the channel. Let's go. You can WASD, WASD for movement. Now we can just enter any one of these training arenas and get right to business. So the first thing we're actually going to do, we're going to go over to the archery combat. Because this is what we're probably going to be the worst at. Let's get it. We picked up our bow. Now let's try to hit some targets. Now, it's better to use the mouse and keyboard. This game does have gamepad support, but it's better to use the mouse when you're using archery. Yeah, let's go. The mouse, you get a little bit more accurate with your shots. It's almost pinpoint accuracy, literally. And there we have it. Let's see how long it takes me to hit all the targets. And my bow skill is not the best, but it's pretty good to get this done. Oh, almost, almost. We almost got it. Let's go. All right. It's going to take us about 30-something, 40 seconds. Uh, we missed it. We missed the draw. All right. And there you go. 48 seconds. Not bad, not bad. Now we can actually run over to the, let's do the horse riding next. Let's learn how to mount a horse and ride properly. 
Now we can do mounted archery or we can do mounted lance or we can do mounted sword and shield. Let's do mountain sword and shield training because this is how we're going to fight for the majority of the time. Now we mounted our war mount. Now we can go down any of these passageways and we got to try to hit these, these things here. Yeah. Charge. Now combat is a little wonky. You got to get used to it. Because it's directional aiming with the sword and things like that. So you have to get really get used to it. Oh, I missed that one. Especially on a mount, you have to really get used to how you're aiming your sword and things like that. Oh, I missed that one too. We're terrible. We're terrible at sword com mounted sword combat. Alright, we did that. I missed that one as well. The thing about these this this short sword I have here is this sword is really uh really short. So the length of your sword definitely matters in this type of game. This is why where you aim and how you actually hit the target counts a lot. See if I do overhead swings, I can hit these things in front of me more accurately. But if I'm trying to like swing from the side like this, it's a little bit a little bit more difficult to hit it. And you can actually slow down to a trot if you want to get more accurate swings like that. Like, <laughs> more accurate, right? Yeah. <laughs> See, it's like the length of the sword that's really preventing me from slicing that down. But yeah, at a full gallop, it's real, real different. You can actually jump on your horse. It's pretty dope. You can actually thrust your sword, swing left, swing right, thrust, and overhead swing. That's a little thrust. Not every weapon has a thrust motion, but most of them have thrust and swing motions. Now we can hurdle this. Uh, my one-handed skill is pretty good, but my horse riding is not the best. And his sword is pretty short, so. We hit, a, we hit 15 targets. Hmm, 15 out of 23, not bad. Let's do some mounted spear training. We probably get a little bit better. Let's dismount the horse. And let's select our spear. All right, now we're on the right track. Let's go. Yeah, let's go. The thing with the lance or the, the pole arm, you have to do it a little bit ahead of time because there's a delay with his action as you can see see there's a slight delay and when he thrusts forward depending on how good your skill is and you have to kind of time it right it's not as quick swinging as the the sword it's actually a, a, a smooth thrusting motion yeah let's go let's get it overhead yeah I'm way better with the spear than when I first started. When I first started, I couldn't hit nothing with the spear. Couldn't hit nothing. Now that I have the timing of the spear a little bit down packed, I can actually time when I'm supposed to start the thrust and when I'm supposed to let it go. Because if you do something like this and like, well, that was, that was still a good thrust. You can thrust too soon or too early. That was a little bit too early and a little bit off target. But this is a very powerful attack. Like this is almost a one-shot kill every single time. And you add your horse's speed to it. So it does a lot of excess damage too. But your speed also makes it harder to time the hit too. Because you still swing the same speed. But you know your horse is going way quicker. So you have to be a little more careful. Alright we hit 14 here. Alright let's get down and go do some mounted archery. Now, mounted archery. I'm not good at archery as a whole, but my character isn't that good. You know, I can do a lot better when... All right, now we're going to do the archery, but the way we're going to do it, we're going to do this at a, a nice little... a nice speed. That way we can keep ourselves on target. You 
you can you can do archery at a gallop but if your horse archery isn't up then you won't really be that accurate on a on a horseback because horse archery is a skill in itself it's different from regular archery because there are archers that specialize in using bows just on horseback which are some of the most annoying units in the game the horse archers i can't stand them no don't miss it yeah we got it we could almost get a, a perfect on this oh okay okay that was that was an accident legolas legolas let's go hawkeye let's go legolas baby I'm not worried about the time. I'm more or less concerned about with just... Oh, let's see if I can Legolas this through the trees. It's one all the way over there. Let's see. Oh, no. That wasn't a leg. Oh, what's going on? Oh, they're really not letting me... Okay, okay, okay. I'm really not allowed to shoot that way. Okay. Oh, dead in front. Got him. This is the one I was trying to hit before. Oh, don't do me like that. Ah, right, let's get it. Quick turn. Oh. Got him. Let's try to hit this one. Oh, no. We missed. Hit this one and hit the next one. Oh, got it. Let's see if we can hawk out through the thing. Oh, man. Let's go. Let's go. Horseback Legolas. Uh, we could get this. We could get this. Uh, we hit the tree. Yeah, collision is real. Collision is a real thing. Oh, we got it. Let's go. Let's go. There's only two more. Two more. Can we get the perfect? Uh, we missed that. This is good. This is good. Got it. Oh, whoa. Hold up. Last one. Last one. It took us only three minutes. All right, we hit that. We hit that. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Now, this training is pretty good, but I would have to say it's a lot more hectic when you're doing this. And it's a full-fledged war going on around you. All right. Let's go into the arm training arena. Let's start with the sword and shield training. Let's start with some two-handed sword. You pig? Yeah, two-handed. Defend from the left. All right, defend from the right. Defend up. Defend down. The way blocking work, blocking is directional. So you'll have to like press up to defend up left right but i have my blocking on automatic so it'll automatically defend left right up or down depending on which way the, the enemy is going to attack but i have my attacking on manual so i'll have to like shift my camera to the left to swing from the left as you can see and then i shift my camera to the right i can swing from the right shift my camera up overhead shift it down lunge those are the four attack animations you got to be real careful because positioning is very important when you're fighting as you can see they want me to attack from the right so I position right and swing attack up there you go attack down there you go successfully finish the sword tutorial now let's do shield do some shield training defend left defend right Defend up. Defend down. Defend down. <laughs> Attack left. Attack right. Yeah, I have to switch my attack direction. Attack up. And attack down. There we go. Finish the sword tutorial. Now, we're actually going to go fight some of these sword trainers. Yeah, you ready? You ready? Let's do some melee training, buddy. Oh, we have to pick the proper weapon. Okay, let's let's train with the same thing, sword and shield. 
Alright, we're gonna fight the rookie trainer first. Let's go. Oh. Oh, no. Block. Block. Ah, oh, let's go. What you got for me? What you got for me? Yeah, he's a rookie. Let's get him. Yeah. All right. Smack them. All right, now let's fight the veteran. This guy's a little more tough. Yeah, what up? I set it off on you. Let's go. Oh, see, look, this guy's way quicker with his sword. He's way better with his sword and better with his shield, so he can attack way more frequently. So you got to be careful with these dudes. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Now, I'm not good with a spear, but I'll do the sword training, the two-handed sword training. Let's see. Defeat the rookie. I'm try I tried to overhead him. Okay, okay, wait. You got to be careful. We're not that good with a two-handed sword, but... Yeah, yeah. All right, this guy's going to be tougher. He has a shield. Let's go. Fight will start in... All right, one second. Oh. Block. Block. Oh, that hurt. All right. Yeah, we had a rhythm on him. We got our rhythm. All right, we got that training done. Now, let's attempt this spear training. All right, rookie. It's on you. See, I'm terrible with a spear. Oh, got him. Okay. I like to learn how to fight with a spear because of tournaments and things like that. I'll show you what the tournaments are like. But if we get a little bit better with the spear, we can actually compete in most of the the tournaments that only have spare wielders. Oh, got him. I actually won that. Okay, good. Good stuff. Let's keep our distance from the veteran. You ready? Let's go. Let's start with some overhead joints. Okay. Got him. Got him there. Got him there. Headshot. Headshot. Alright, let's block. Let's block for a minute. Keep your distance. Yeah, okay. We did that. Okay. Now, we can do crossbow and javelin training as well. Now, if we go back to the ranged area, we got some crossbow and javelin stuff we can do. And that'll teach you how to use a crossbow and how to use a javelin. I'm almost there, bro. I'm almost ready, Neeson. <laughs> All right, let's go. Let's go back to the ranged area and actually get the javelin training and crossbow. We can do the crossbow first, actually. Shooting positions. Now, the crossbow is very similar to the, the bow, but it just has a loading speed, and it's way more accurate. See, it doesn't fluctuate as much as the bow. Once it's loaded, it's ready to go. You just point and shoot. But the load speed is a thing. Oh, that missed. That's weird. That didn't look like it was going to miss. All right. Well, I was off. There we go. There we go. Three targets left. Let's try to hit this one through the thing. Oh, man. And these crossbows do a lot more damage to armor and things like that, too. So that's that's fun. All right, let's get this last one. Pretty good, pretty good. 46 seconds, not bad. Now let's do some javelin training. Now I like javelins. They do a lot of damage and a lot of damage to enemy shields, but javelins are, we didn't really spec our character into throwing weapons, so there's that. And you have to kind of arc them upward. 
to try to get the, a good throw. Yeah, javelins are a little tough to get used to. But these do a lot of damage. This is why ammunition with these are limited. Javelins are just deadly, man. Man, they're deadly. Doing pretty good with these javelins. I'm not sure if your actual skills play into this training because I shouldn't be this good at javelins. I say that as I miss three in a row, right? But I'm pretty sure my, my actual my character is not going to be this good with javelins when I actually get into it. Oh, missed that one. There we go. It's another one over here. All right, we got to throw it up and over. Javelins are cool, too, because it's easier to hold the position, too, as you can see. You don't have to just throw it immediately. You can kind of wait. But you always want to arc it up a bit. It has a little throwing arc to it. So you want to go up just slightly, and there you go. That should work. Bingo. Javelins are real fun, but you get about four or five javelins per bag. So they're not really too dependable in a long, drawn-out battle. But still, there you go. We actually completed the training. Let's go. Let's go. And there we have it. We finished the training mission. Perfect. All right. Now, as soon as we leave the training field, we get this prop up. Before we do anything else, we're low on food. There's a village north of here. We can buy provisions and find some help. You're a better rider than I, so I'll let you lead the way. Let's go. Navigating Calridia. WASD to move the map around, or you can just simply drag the map around with your mouse, or just move it around with your controller. Just like that. Pretty dope. Now, in order to get to a location, you have you can hover over it and just press A, or you can click on it with your mouse. And then it'll actually start traveling. But before we do that, hold on, let's pause it real quick. Because everything is happening in real time. As you see, if we just press play, everything starts happening in real time. Now, that's why I wanted to pause it. Let's look at the map of Carl Radio. We start here in this little sector of the map. This is the training field that we just came out of. You, as you can see, you can zoom all the way down to the training field. These are refugees running around and patrolling. This is the training field we just left out of, and this is our party, me and my brother. We are headed to this village over here, Tiva. Now, if we zoom out, our party of two, this is the map of Karate. This huge, huge, huge map. Wow, this is insane. This is insane. It may seem overwhelming. Now, I'm going to explain what's going on with all of these different factions and things like that a little bit later on but for now i just wanted you to get a scope of this game in this map and i can literally travel from this point on the map all the way up here to the north all the way over here to the west all the way over here to the east and all the way down south over here and each of these trips will happen in real time and they will take real in-game days there's a day night cycle it keeps time with the times of day and year with the seasons because your characters do age and you can actually die from old age. We're going to get into a lot of that stuff later on. But for now, we have this first mission of going to Tiva and collecting some food. Let's, let's head there. All right. Entering settlements. You have a ride at Tiva. You can explore the location. You can enter the settlement by pressing the highlighted button on the left. Let's take the walk around town. Now, each of these towns, they have a little menu that pop up, and you can speak to the headmaster of the town from here, or you can do a whole bunch of other stuff. But for now, we're going to actually go into the town and walk around, just like we were doing inside of the tutorial area. So let's do that. Well, we're here, I guess. So, we need food, and after that, Maybe some men to come with us. The head man here can probably help us. Let's try to find him. Hey, 
the new quest has activated. And as you can see, we are inside that village that we just saw on the world map. And when you get into a village, you can do stuff like press the left bumper and it'll pull up important people in the area and things like that. And you can go up to the, the headmaster and talk to him. Now, what's so dope about this? All of this stuff is happening in real time. So this village, the people going about the village doing their thing. You can come into these village. You can do quests. You can actually fight battles in this village. This is insane. A lot of stuff ends up happening. But for now, let's just find the headmaster and try to complete this quest. And you usually have companions that follow you into these maps too. So when you go into these village locations, you're going to have people like your companion or your brother following you. Super dope. You can get off your horse, walk around. You can actually walk up to people and fight them. It's super crazy. All right, we had our weapons there. Left bumper. Now, if you see, we press the left bumper, it pulls up a little highlighted ghost image right there. It tells us that's why our quest location, and that's the guy we're looking for. So let's head over to him and go talk with him. As you can see, this is the guy. Now, yes, a few icons over his head. The human icon lets you know that you can interact with him. The blue icon is a, is a side quest. And the yellow icon is the main quest. That lets you know that this guy has a main quest to give. But he also probably has a side quest, too. So let's just talk to him and get the main quest. I'm Orthos, head man of this village. What brings you here? We need help. Some raiders have taken our younger brother and sister captive. We think they may have passed this way. They got your people too. Sorry to hear that. Those bastards have done a bit of killing and looting in these parts as well. We think they've gone north. I reckon there are a few folk around here who'll join you in going after them if you'll pay for their gear. Once you've made your preparations, come and talk to me again. I may have a task for you if you're going after the raiders. All right. Leaving a mission. All we have to do to leave this map is just hold B and it'll let us leave the settlement the same way we left our training area. All right, here we go. Tutorial recruitment. Your brother has asked to hire at least four men before you set out to face the raiders. You can hire troops from villages and towns by pressing A on the cursor and go to recruit troops. Now, each of these villages and each of the bigger towns or cities... You can recruit men from. The only place you can't recruit men from on the map is places like castles. There are castles all over the map. Like, as you can see, this castle right here, Annika Castle. These are the only places you can't recruit men from. These are garrisons that you can put men inside of, but you can't recruit from them. But all of these little towns, every single individual town on the map, you can recruit that faction's soldiers from. As well, as you see these little icons on the map, these towns each specialize in something different, different types of goods. These, this town specializes in sheep. This town is specialized in sheep as well. This town specializes in hogs. This town specializes in horses. We're going to get into that a lot later. But for now, let's just go to the recruit troops tab. Now, when you go into these towns and try to recruit troops, sometimes they'll have troops, sometimes they won't. In this case, they definitely have the troops. So we're going to recruit a bunch of these recruits. Now, notables help. Like, the more you do for the town, the more your relationship increases with the town, the better the troops are going to be. And the higher level they're going to be. But for now, these troops are all the same level. Let's recruit all of them. We can recruit them one at a time. Or we can just recruit all of them. We're going to take all of them. One, two, three, four, five, six men. Now, we wanted, we were supposed to get four men, but we're going to get six men instead. Let's do it. Buying food. You should purchase some supplies from the settlement on the left. Now, we can also buy supplies from these settlements as well. So we can walk around these settlements. Each town on a map, mind you. And each town is a unique map in itself. So we can walk in, we can talk to the quartermasters and get quests from them. As you can see, it needs grain for seed. That's a side quest. We also have a main quest in this town. We can recruit troops and we can also buy products from them. Buy and sell goods. Let's do that. As I said before, this town specializes in sheep. So you're going to find sheep here. 
these can be any random number this amount of goods in these towns any random number and the prices vary sometimes the prices are high sometimes the prices are low and that's going to determine you know the trade the trade economy in this game there you go buying food it recommends we buy two sacks of grain you can do this by transferring the grain directly over to your inventory like that that takes everything or we can actually just select it one at a time and as you can see as we selected it all goes to our inventory we can buy the wool we can buy the sheep but for now we're just gonna buy the three grain to make sure we have food you absolutely need food if you're gonna field an army even if it's just you you need food so you always got to stock up on food we got the food let's dip all right now we finished this they want us to talk to this guy again and we, we we can get a quest from him now we finished our preparations we can go walk back and take a walk around town but like i said we don't have to do that we can actually just click his portrait and talk to him straight from the menu so you can decide to walk around town or you can just do all of your business from this interface here which is real convenient so let's click his portrait Talk to the head man, click visit. It'll go, it'll take us straight to him or we could just go straight to the dialogue, but let's click visit. Now visit just takes you straight into town to the person you want to talk to. Glad to see you found what you need. Now, how about that matter I mentioned earlier? But there's this wandering doctor who comes through it from time to time. Name of Tactius. Treats people for free. <laughs> We're fond of him. Well, we last saw him a few days ago. He was carrying some sort of chest, which he was very mysterious about. He was on some sort of quest, he said, though wouldn't tell us. Before. He set off on the road just a few hours before the raiders came through it. Well, He's not really a worldly type, just the kind of fellow who'd stumble into a trap and let himself be captured. We're worried about him. If you can keep an eye out for him, this Tactius, we'd be very grateful. Maybe if he's alive and well, he'll tell you a little more about his quest. Alright, now this guy has a mission for us. He wants us to find this merchant dude. Alright, let's leave. Alright, as you can see, we got two brand new quests here. Locate and rescue the Traveler. Look around the village to find the party that captured the Traveler, whom the headman told you about. Defeat three parties. So that's our next quest. Now, this is the very first real introduction to combat. As you can see, our party is eight deep. We currently have me, my brother, and six troops the headman's troops this is our party right here revelous our brother and our troops over here pretty dope this is our character screen we actually have a skill point that we need to allocate we're not going to touch our brother's skill points or nothing like that now we have we have a skill point to ourselves that we need to allocate we're actually going to put that into riding immediately no one-handed i'm sorry we're actually going to put that into one-handed and let's go. The first thing we're going to do is track down these three parties. There should be three parties on the map somewhere. We see two of them already. Now, when you leave a settlement, the game is on pause, obviously. But as we start chasing these parties down, the game is going to start moving in real time. And just another quick note. While we're on our own little personal quest and personal mission, the entire world is moving. People are running around, gathering armies building up their own thing trading there's caravans there's bandits looters everything going on on a map non-stop it never stops unless you pause the game so everything we do everybody else is going to be doing their own thing too so we got to keep that in mind as well but for now let's just hunt down these raiders and we caught them immediately a party of raiders is six of them we can send our troops in to attack and it'll just handle it manually or we can it'll handle it automatically or we can handle it manually. We're going to go in for an assault. Okay. 
Now, we can pull up the battle commands by pressing F1 through F3 to show you how to make your, your units follow you, charge, and things like that. What we're going to do, we're going to pull up the menu, and we're going to have our follow units me. follow me. I gave them the command to follow. I can also just give them the command Whoa. to fall back there. I can give them the command Attack. to charge. And they're going to charge at the enemy. But for now, we're just going to say, follow me. follow me. Now, there's a reason why I want to do this real quick. I'm going to put our archers, I mean, our horsemen over here real quick. Move. And I'm going to try to combat these dudes myself. Come on. No damage. This is very dangerous, by the way, because we could easily get killed. Oh, there we go. 41 damage. Ah. Oh, man, we're losing our horse. All right, man, help, help. Kill them all. We're going to charge our, our cavalry now. There we go. We just wanted to make sure we do some damage. Because your experience level only goes up when you do damage. You get participation points, but mainly when you do damage, you get the most points. I'm not the best fighting from horseback. We could actually put all that, pull out our, our spear, too. Die! Come on. Don't let me die. No! Alright, we totally lost our very first battle. <laughs> Alright, let's go. Let's let's actually we're gonna take these troops that they had prisoner. We're gonna add them to our party. And we're gonna actually take these dudes as our prisoners. Now we actually got some equipment here. We can equip these. These are slightly worse. This is some good leg armor. This is better than what we're wearing. Let's take that. Unbalanced now we can actually equip that and we can actually give this to our brother if he doesn't have anything better But he does so we're just gonna throw these over into our stash and there we go. This is the loot we gathered Now I wanted to give a demonstration on what happens when you actually lose a battle. So that's why we lost there If you get taken down the battle isn't over unless they kill you outright they, There's a chance that you can just die outright if your soldier if your character gets downed in battle but for the most part, that's just going to mean that you got knocked out and the battle will continue without you. Now, what's going to happen is your men are going to be without a leader and they're just going to run frantically and just attack randomly. So it's very bad if you go down in battle. You're most likely going to lose your whole army if the battle was anywhere near close before you died. So it's not good to get killed and try to be a one man army or some sort of superhero in this type of battles. Because if you get taken out, as you just saw... We're dead, and we got to leave it up to our troops to finish the battle. So be very careful with that. For demonstration purposes, we were a little bit reckless, and we didn't even attack with our main army because we could have got this done way quicker. As you can see, me versus seven dudes or six dudes, even though I was on horseback and had declared advantage, they still was able to take me out. So don't get so naive when it comes to these battles. It is similar to a real-time strategy and it's real realistic with war tactics so in this battle what we're going to do is we're going to actually have our troops follow me after me and go straight into it i'm going to give the order to charge, charge off the rip while i try to get a good hit off oh man You know what? I can fight better from off my horse. I'm going to be honest with you. I just fight better off the horse. Yeah. As I die, right? Run. We need our help. Run. Run. 
We can probably fight one of them, but not two or three. Oh, we got hit in the, hit in the nuts with a rock. <laughs> Yo, now we can follow our brother and see what he's going to do. Now, that was another demonstration. As you can see, we went into this battle with 50% health. Your health doesn't automatically regenerate after battle. You have to wait. And it regenerates over time. So, yeah, if you take a lot of wounds in the battle, you're not going to be able to just jump right into another battle. So, there we go. More demonstrations. We got taken out by a group of raiders. And look, we're at 1% health. That means we can't really go into another battle until we heal up. Now, we got some more good stuff here. Hmm. Let's keep this loop. All right, we got to find this third party of raiders now to finish this quest off. We don't know exactly where they are, but we'll find them. And as you can see, our health is going up slowly over time. We, we spotted the third party of raiders. Let's go hunting down. Attack, man. All right, enough games, enough games. We're going to actually Charge! do it for real this time. Charge off the rip. Get a good running start. And destroy. Dealing one damage. You can deal charge damage with your horse too. Your horses actually deal damage with every charge. Oh, you dare challenge me? Oh, yeah. Let's go. We, cha we taking this challenge. We definitely taking this challenge. Yeah, let's get it. Death. Death. He's a bad man. Yeah, that's right. I jump off my steed. All right. After me. Follow me, man. Follow me. All right, I lost my horse, man. Get him. Charge! Oh. Oh, got him. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, man. Yeah. Yeah. I really wanted to get a kill that one. That's why I jumped off my horse. I really needed a kill. Now you could typically, if you had a ranged weaponry, you could do pretty good with with a with an arrow on your horse. Did we get any better gear? It doesn't look like this gear is any better than. Oh, it spoke too soon. This is a little bit better. All right, all right. Let's take all of this loot. Now we can sell this stuff. We can give it to our army, or we can just equip it. For now, we're gonna hold on to it. You rescue several prisoners that the raiders have been dragging along. They look parched and exhausted. You give them a bit of water and bread, and after a short while, one staggers to his feet and comes over to you. I don't know who you are, but I'm in your debt. These brigands would have marched us to our deaths. My name's Tactios. I'm a doctor by trade. I was on, well, a bit of a quest, but I'm now thinking I'm not really made for this kind of thing. I was with a caravan, and they just came out of the brush. We were surrounded and outnumbered, so we gave up. I figured they'd keep us alive, if just for the ransom. But then they started flogging us along at top speed, without any water, and I was just about ready to drop. I could feel the signs of heat stroke creeping up, and I told them, but they just flogged me more. If your group hadn't come along, maybe I have a way to thank you properly. We're looking for two children captured by the raiders. Can you tell us anything? I'm afraid I haven't seen any children. 
But after our caravan was attacked, the chief of the raiders, the one they call Radagos, took and rode off with our more valuable belongings, including a chest that I had. All right. He seemed to be controlling more than one band around this area. If this lot has your kin, then I think he'd be the one to know. And since I have nothing of value left to repay your help, I'll tell you this. If you do catch up with and defeat that ruffian, you may be able to recover my chest. It contains a valuable ornament, which I was told could be of great value if you knew where to sell it. I was trying to find out more about it, but, as I say, I've had all my urge for travelling flogged out of me. Right now, I don't think I'd venture more than 20 paces from a well as long as I live. We'll keep that in mind. It doesn't look like much, and I suspect this lot will give it away for a few coins. But I got it from a mercenary whom I treated once, and he swore it was related to Neretzi's folly. I don't know what that means, except that Neretis was, of course, the emperor who died in battle some years back. Maybe you could find out its true value. Neretis folly. Thanks for saving me again. I hope our paths will cross again. Quest completed. We rescued the traveler. There's Radagas's hideout. Find the hideout of Radagas's gang and defeat him. All right, now we have the location of Radagas's hideout. We can actually go in there and take on this hideout now that we know where it's at. Or we can recruit more troops to help us out. Let's see if they have more soldiers here. No soldiers here. All right, we can't recruit anybody else. So the next thing we're going to have to do is go take on Radagas in this hideout. And we're going to take care of that hideout on the next episode of Mountain Blade Bannerlord. Oh, man. This was dope, man. This was dope. All right. All right. We're going to end the video here. If you're interested in playing this game, we got some information in the description box below. I appreciate you for tuning in. I'll catch you in the next one. It's your boy DB4. And I'm out. Peace.